Yeah, everything's going well. You know, obviously, um, we were disappointed for a very short time about our result against Mexico. Uh, I think when we look at it a little bit more closely, there's a lot about that performance that we can like and think that we're improving as the tournament continues to go on. Um, but we move very quickly from that result to our preparations for this next match with Honduras. Uh, and I think the players are very well prepared and very eager and very ready for this uh, penultimate match. Hi, Jason. Uh, uh, quickly, I wanted to, or to start with, I wanted to ask about um, Hassani Dotson's health. If, is he available and fit? And are there any other uh, injury concerns that you're dealing with now? And, and then also, if you could give a word about the dangers that you see as Honduras is possessing. Yeah, uh, Charles Hassani went out of the last game with an ankle sprain. Um, he did not train yesterday. He trained for a little bit today. I think it's still a little bit questionable as to whether or not he'll be in the lineup. Uh, the second part of your question again, Charles, sorry. Uh, it was about Honduras and where you see their greatest uh, threats. Yeah, it's another team that I think has some really, really nice attacking options. Uh, their central midfielder, number eight, uh, Rodriguez, is pulling a lot of the strings. Uh, their right midfielder, who's a left, actually a left-footed player, Reyes, comes inside and is a real danger and threat. Uh, the fact that they play with two forwards will give us a little bit of a different look than we faced in this tournament so far. Um, and will mean that our back four has to be very connected and very uh, in tune with things. So uh, a dangerous team, a very good team. And I wouldn't have it any other way, actually. You know, we should have to beat a good and dangerous team in order to qualify for the Olympics. Thank you. Hey, Jason, Frank Paniso here from uh, Fort Lauderdale. I just wanted to ask, you guys have obviously been very clear about wanting to stick to a certain style of play throughout the tournament. I understand the reasons for that. Um, Given this is a make or break game with, the, with an Olympic qualifying berth on the line, does it necessarily matter for you guys how you go about getting the, res the necessary result? Or does it just any, whatever means necessary to, to get the win and, and then move on and continue building um, what you guys want to build? Thanks, Jason. Yeah, no problem. You know, I think um, I hope that I haven't been misunderstood. It is not that, that we believe in our style over results. We believe in a, in a certain way of playing the game that we, you know, if we do those things correctly, if we, if we manage our game model correctly, we believe that will give us the best chance to win. Uh, and I don't think there's anything about the style of our play or what, how we've been trying to play here that has led to any poor results. Um, so from my point of view, I think it's easy to do both, but the focus for sure is on winning. <laughs> we take it any way we can get it. Ron, go ahead. Hi, Jason. Are there things you see at the beginning of the game where you can tell whether your team is playing well or not? And if you see things not going, what are the things in your mind that you try to do immediately to change things? Um, yeah, Ron, I think as a coach, you, you're always expecting a certain type of start to the game, always hopeful for a certain type of start to the game. And for me, that's an aggressive start. Uh, it's an aggressive way of defending. It's an aggressive way of pressing when you lose the ball. And it's an aggressive way of moving the ball forward quickly when you have it. Um, and so you're looking for some of that tempo at the beginning of the games. You're looking for the players to show that they feel assured of themselves and are in a good moment. Um, and then if those things don't come off, I think mostly from my point of view on the sideline during the, during the 45 minutes of the first half, it's about trying to continue to encourage the players um, because you know what their potential is and you know what they're capable of. So even though players may not be able to perform at their absolute best every single match, what you're asking is for those players to, to, to play close to their best or be moving towards their potential. So from my point of view, it's mostly about, you know, positivity and confidence uh, with the messaging that we're giving them. And then there's some slight tactical things that we can, we can change to perhaps put them in a more um, forward thinking position. Jeff, go ahead. Thanks, Chris. Hi, Jason. Um, just wondering what your assessment of, of, your, of the three center backs that you've used so far and have you made a decision about you know, which ones are going to see the field or at least start the game tomorrow? You know, I've been really pleased with all three, to be completely frank. Um, and I think all three have had the majority good moments. All three have also had a minority of bad moments. Um, 
where they've just lost focus a little bit, given the ball away in dangerous positions. It's mostly been what they've done with the ball that I think hasn't been absolute 100%. What they've done without the ball, I would say all three of them have been really positive, um, made some critical coverages of outside backs, covering each other, defensive plays, um, tackles. We saw a couple of really good tackles in the last game by Kessler and Pineda. And so what those three players have done for the coaching staff has made it extremely difficult uh, for the decision. We've made one, um, but we're not going to announce it here. 